I'm here at the trailhead for the Picacho Peak Trails. This is a part of the Oregon Mountain Desert Peaks National Monument. You can see the snow-capped Oregon Mountains over there, thanks to yesterday's unseasonable snowstorm. And there's the Picacho Peak itself. Today I will be going over to the Box Canyon using one of the many connecting trails that goes from the Picacho Peak area over to Box Canyon. And under the canopy there you can see a peak which is right next to the Box Canyon Dam. And we're going to be heading over that area uh, today. I'm going to go down the access road. After a bit, we will encounter a railing, which is off to the right side of the road. There are two openings in that railing. The first one takes you to a trail that goes along the west side of Picacho Mountain and can be used to access the Box Canyon area. But the more direct route goes from the second opening, which is at a curve in the road. So I'm going to go down that road, take that second opening, and uh, take the trail there to the network of trails around the Box Canyon area. We've gone 0.41 miles. It's an uphill grade. A little bit difficult, frankly. This is the second opening in the railing. You can see there's a pretty rough trail. Goes a lot up and down. That's going to be kind of tough. But it's a barrel of laughs. So here we go. We're 0 0.85 miles in. It's a trail marker here. Picacho Peak is behind us at this point. Doniana Mountains are behind that creosote. And here we see there's an intersection. For history buffs, this was once part of the historic Butterfield Overland Trail. That was used to travel by stagecoach and deliver mail to California. And there's an intersection here. You can go off to the right, which takes you to the west side of the mountain and takes you to Box Canyon. You can also go up this way, which is what we're going to do today. Oh, and by the way, this road here goes back uh, by the airport. That's Box Canyon Road. So if you were to drive along the I-10 frontage road to get here, you'd be going to a lot that's on that road. But this time we are going to go along this way. So this is a pretty important site to be aware of if you're liking to hike in this area. And uh, let me give you a little view of the road that goes south past the airport. In the meantime, we're going to be going down this road roughly west to get to the Box Canyon Dam area. OK. 
Okay. 1.43 miles in. There's a intersection here. I can keep going west toward the rough and ready area or I could take one of these trails north or northwest to go to Box Canyon. The trail on the top of that ridge is the one that goes straight to the dam. So that's what I'll be taking today. Again, for reference, there's Picacho Mountain with the snow-covered Oregon Mountains in the background. Here's the Bucks Canyon Dam with the usual assortment of shotgun shells, rifle casings, broken bottles, and the like. I'm going to get a picture of this commemorative plaque here. It says it's United States property. Actually, that's not the commemorative plaque. The commemorative plaque used to be over here, documenting the fact that the dam was built by the Civilian Conservation Corps in the early to mid-1930s. Of course, the plaque has been removed. You can see a little bit of uh, where the metal letters had been embedded in the in the concrete. I'm actually not sure if they were pried off or if it's just wear and tear from the harsh weather that we have here. Get another picture. Let's go over and take a look from the vantage point. By the way, I can actually smell either wood smoke or gunpowder. I know that doesn't come through on the video. And there's Box Canyon itself. It meanders over toward Okay, camera stopped for some reason. So that goes over toward Picacho Mountain and ultimately past north of Picacho Mountain. Along the way, it's joined by an arroyo on the right and one on the left. The one on the left is Spring Canyon that meanders roughly northwest between here and the prehistoric trackways park. This peak here with a rough jeep trail on it, that's a good landmark to know if you're headed toward the canyon dam area. There's another path over there. I can see a lone hiker. Probably can't see him in the video, but that's always nice to see somebody else partaking of these natural and historic areas. By the way, this is part of a series of uh, dams that were built to protect the uh, agricultural areas along the banks of the Rio Grande. So it really has contributed to the local economy at the cost of some perturbation of the environment. We're gonna 
across this dam and I'm going to drop down into that canyon and uh, follow it along toward the uh, Picacho Mountain area. Okay, I'm going to scramble down this slope here. Notice I'm going very slow. Crouching down in sort of a semi-surfer pose. Because I really don't want to fall. At this point, falling wouldn't be catastrophic, but would be embarrassing. When I'm hiking solo, I really am careful about the risks I'm going to take. And here the biggest risk is going to be pushing through some of this bramble. I don't see anything with thorns on it, so I'm happy to do that. Trying to be careful to disturb the vegetation as little as possible. There we go. Spear can there, Coors Light. Kind of disgusting that someone would do that. A bit of a lighter, it's broken. All right. So there's a little bit more of this scrambling, but I think you get the idea here. All right. So I'm through the bramble and the scrambling area. By the way, if I were leading a group hike or participating in a trail run, I would not go that route because a lot of the hikers would be annoyed by the terrain and runners would be disappointed that they cannot run. And even though I know some pretty accomplished trail runners, I don't know anybody who could or would run through that. Notice there are four by four tracks here. So we do get some off-road vehicle activity in this area. And some of these tracks are pretty fresh. As a matter of fact, it looks like they've occurred since the snowstorm uh, because they're so distinct in the sand. But at this point we can resume our usual pace and keep going east. I can discern the top of Picacho Mountain. I'm facing more or less straight east here. I don't think you'll be able to see it through the video and through the branches. Here we go. Okay, this is Interesting part of the Box Canyon area. Notice it's uh, sculpted, parts are wet, some of the rocks are slippery, and there are pools of water in the areas that are constantly shaded. So, even though I plan to keep running in this area, I'm really leery about slipping and falling, so I'll take the time to record a little bit of this video try to give people a really good view of the area. In my view, this is kind of a magical place just because it is so serene. Even though you do have the 4x4 traffic every once in a while and the occasional beer can, I still feel a sense of relaxation and peace when I get to these kinds of spots. So I kind of take my time through here, observing my inner thought process. And when I notice myself starting to feel competitive, because I know my running time is going to be posted on social media, I kind of laugh at myself for such foolish, errant thoughts. And this area is kind of cool because there are a couple of Grinding holes, presumably made by Native Americans. 
unfortunately you won't be able to see them be very well because they're full of water. There's a little niche there that more modern types have used uh, for campfires, I guess. It's kind of unfortunate. Uh, but that niche may have served some sort of ceremonial purpose in historic times. And certainly you can imagine in the days before air conditioning that this would be a welcome spot because it is shaded and it is cool. Today it's kind of chilly, but still very nice and certainly a welcome reprieve given that I've gotten kind of sweaty at this point. Okay, I'm 2.16 miles into this joint. Here's a rocky ledge that I'm going to scale down. It's actually quite easy. I've done it many times. 4 by 4s will detour around it. But, of course, despite what I said earlier about competitive streak, every once in a while I feel like I want to do something that's a little bit challenging, but not truly risky. So here we go. And again, this is kind of muddy here. You have to be pretty careful with your footing. I'm aware that uh, this kind of thing would be attacked by some trail runners. You can do it. The risk is not real great, but I'm going to get through the muddy portion at a hiking pace. Because I also know there's another drop off up here that I'm going to want to negotiate carefully. So we're in a situation where the runoff through the arroyo has gotten rid of layers of sediment and have, you see, exposed layers of bedrock at a uh, muddy area in front of me. It's all gray. That gray is actually volcanic ash from a time long ago. I'm guessing tens of millions of years ago. And let's take a look back. The canyon forks a little bit, by the way. You can make your way through there off to the left, which would be south, to get over to the Picacho Peak area if you wanted. But today we're going to be going probably west northwest or excuse me east northeast uh, to go over to the picacho peak area okay i've gone 2.29 miles there used to be a sign here i don't know what it used to say uh, maybe it didn't say anything. Anyway, there's a salt cedar there forming an arch over the Box Canyon Trail. A much wider trail off to the right. That's Spring Canyon I was telling you about. And just to further complicate matters with local trivia, if we went over that ridge over there, we would eventually get to Apache Canyon, which winds its way into the prehistoric trackways. That salt cedar, by the way, is an invasive species, and perhaps someday someone's going to come in and take it out, so I'm not sure I would use it as a reliable landmark. Despite its invasive status, I have to admit it is kind of attractive and it's convenient to have a landmark like that if you're cruising along the other way 
you don't want to miss this turnoff because if you're intending to go down Box Canyon and you end up going down Apache Canyon instead, uh, you're going to be going way out of your way. Okay, 2.74 miles in. I forked to the right over there to get out of this section. The trails are a little bit braided here. It doesn't matter that much exactly what you take. But the general idea is that you want to find this spot and go right down this arroyo. And uh, there are, I think, three trails that go over toward the Picacho Peak Trail System from here. If you go that way, to the east, northeast, you would be skirting the north edge of Picacho Peak. But what we're going to do is take this fork, so we'll be going roughly south. There's a great landmark here. Notice there's some cairns that make it a little easier. There's some landmarks and this great big water tank is a great one that lets you know that uh, there's a connection to the loop trail that goes along the west side of Picacho Mountain. There's some rock hoodoos that you can see from a distance either way. Here's a ruin of something. I assume this was a stock tank at one point. It's uh, pretty well rusted out, obviously. An attached water tank. You can go over that peak there where you see the 4x4 tracks. You can see a trail marker for the footpath. So you have some options. I think today I'm going to go back to the Arroyo and go south just because I haven't gone that way anytime recently. At mile marker three, I shouldn't say mile marker, there's no marker. Looking north, I, the way I'm coming, southwest, it's a jeep trail that goes back toward Fox Canyon area. Notice a trail marker suggesting that the formal trail continues down this Arroyo to the south. This is 3.05 miles in. I'm just going to stop quickly to comment. You could go three different ways here. It doesn't really matter because they all end up going to the same spot. I usually go off this way to the left along the cliff edge just because it's more scenic. I'm um, 3.33 miles. That trail is the one I was talking about that goes along the east edge of Picacho. And the trail I'm on now will join up with it in a little bit. It's marked, by the way. It's a little bit reassuring if you're not sure where you're going. 
So here go right to go by the, along the east side of Picacho. Go left to go toward the Box Canyon Trail area. And there's a triangle here. Go right to get back to the Loop Road. And go left. To go a different way, and this trail right here is probably the most popular. It goes directly from the parking lot to the western part of the trail system. Three point seven three miles. We're going to the where excuse me, the point where we're going to join the south upgoing trail. Go to the top. And then there's a trail that goes off to the right along that ridge composed of volcanic tuff goes back to the parking lot he just crosses the royal and here don't go straight turn right go along this ridge and then takes her right back to the parking lot All right, across that arroyo, here's the trail marker. Pretty obviously goes up to the parking lot. Put my mask on because not uncommonly, I'll encounter people up here at the parking lot. Okay, there we go. 4.05 miles. One hour and 13 minutes. That's it for now. <laughs>